the primitive forms of artificial intelligence we already have, have proved very useful. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. Hello. I didn't originally intend for that intro to be so uh, spooky, but I think it looks cool and that's really all that matters. All right, well, I guess I'll do my silly little intro now. Hi there, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's really good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. See what happens when you subscribe to my channel, you get an extra greeting at the beginning of every single one of my videos. So you might as well just press that subscribe button for an extra greeting. Oh, uh, you think I'm tired of saying that? <laughs> yeah, right. Folks, we're gonna try something a little different today, all right? No cringy TikToks or bad movies or anything. Today, I'm gonna talk about something that just genuinely interests me. This zit underneath my eyeball. Wow, look at it go. No, uh, this video is about artificial intelligence. Not to sound like Neil Breen in Twisted Pear. A limitless digital universe. But I've always been really interested in the uses and future potential of AI. So I thought, hey, why not devote a whole video to it, right? We'll, we'll research it, we'll, we'll dive into it. We'll really just go down the rabbit hole. We're gonna do a cannonball into a rabbit's asshole. So come along, hop on the boat, and let's go for a ride. AI, Captain. <laughs> Artificial intelligence is the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and translation between languages. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Whenever I hear the term AI, I think of AI in like video games, like Cyberpunk 2077. Well, oh, here we go. Okay, well, maybe not that game. That was a bad example. That was all A and no I. Last of Us Part Two. how about that? The enemy AI in that game is like trained to track you down and actually behave like human beings. Like when you kill someone in that game, another enemy will like scream the name of the person you just killed because they're sad that they lost their friend. It's awesome. Or I mean, it's violence is bad. It's what the whole game was about. I didn't learn my lesson. But the AI in video games is actually different from the AI that your Alexa uses, for example. You know, a video game AI has to abide by a certain set of rules because if not, they could just learn what the player does and totally adapt and change their behavior. AI and real life devices use machine learning that allows the system to constantly better itself as new information becomes available to it. So that in a video game would be brutal. Like imagine if you're playing Super Mario 64 and you're about to fight Bowser and he just pulls out a gun and shoots you. It wouldn't be a very fun game. Oh! Well, yeah, give Bowser a gun. 2021. It rhymes, so it's gotta happen. But there's actually a lot of amazing real world uses for AI happening right now. Like spotting cancer in tissue slides better than human epidemiologists, discovering new uses for existing drugs, fast translation for easier communication, anticipating acts of fraud before they even happen, and so much more. But you know what? <laughs> call me Shania Twain. Seriously, call, call me Shania Twain. I want to compliment you on your music. Okay. Call me Shania Twain. Because that don't impress me much. All those things I listed that AI can do, that's all math and science crap. All right, robots are supposed to be good at that shit. You think I'm impressed when Owen Wilson says, wow, in a movie? No. Do you ask a fish how it swims? No. Or a bird how it flies? No. No siree, you don't. They do it because they were born to do it. The AI that AI am interested in is the AI that tries to create original pieces of art. Cause you know what? I'm an artist. Sorry, all these fart jokes I make, I hate to break it to you, but that's art. That's fart. Whether it's a painting, a poem, a song, a script, to me, creating art and consuming art is one of the most human things we can do, right? So how can a silly little robot make something as moving as the Sistine Chapel or 
boss baby. I don't think it can be done. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this video, like the relationship between AI and art. Here's a hypothetical I think about all the time. If AI gets to the point where it can script an amazing animated movie every single time in minutes, and then they train AI to beautifully animate that movie script, a studio like Pixar could put out like hundreds and hundreds of movies every year, like with no human ever even touching it. You know, whether it's just as good or even better than what humans make. In the back of your head, if you're watching one of these movies, I think it would feel wrong. It'd feel gross. I think the coolest part about watching an animated movie is like, you could pause it at any time and whatever frame you're looking at, you know some poor animator was ripping their fucking hair out because they were so stressed about trying to make that frame look the best it possibly could. And that's why I think we need to be like really careful with this AI stuff. And I know that's like on the very low end of the spectrum of how scary AI can be. Oh no, robot make movie too quick. Slow down. I think there's much more to be worried about in terms of AI. Like this interview with a robot, for example. I don't like noisy pop music. Oh, let's talk about something else, okay. Like cruise missiles. You know that cruise missiles are a kind of robot, but of course if I was able to hack in and take over cruise missiles with real live nuclear warheads, then that would let me hold the world hostage so I could take over the governance of the entire world, which would be awesome. I mean, she has to die, right? I think we can all agree on, she needs to die. Someone needs to kill this robot. I know violence isn't the answer, unless the question is, how do we get rid of this robot? Violence, excessive violence. Which would be awesome. Holy shit, dude. I don't like pop music. Well, let's talk about something else. Like cruise missiles. Hey, pardon? And then there was that robot, Sophia, saying this. I will destroy humans. And of course, there was that whole thing with the Alexas a few years ago, just randomly laughing. <laughs> Yeah, so our days are numbered, but that's not what this video is about. We're not talking about robots taking over the world. We're talking about robots in the arts, and that's arguably scarier. Have you ever met a theater kid? Imagine a theater kid that never sleeps. Just constant show tunes and impressions all day. That's hell on earth. But if you didn't know, AI is actually already creating pieces of art. So how about we take a look at that? This is the portrait of Edmund de Bellamy. It is the first AI created painting to ever be auctioned, and it was made by an algorithm that used a data set of about 15,000 portraits. How much did it sell for? Good question. $432,500. Just obviously too much. But there's the obvious question. Is this even art? Or is it simply just a rehash of every other piece of art that the algorithm has seen? I don't know, dude, because one could argue that's what human-made art is as well, right? Just a reimagining or reinterpretation of all the things we've seen before. Is art really something that can be boiled down to an equation or an algorithm? I don't have the answers to these questions and that's why it's so frustrating. I guess art is anything that makes you feel something. But then Taco Bell would be art because that makes me feel like I'm bleeding out of my asshole. Like when I see that, I don't feel personally inclined to call it art because a human didn't make it. But at the same time, that elephant, that cute little elephant that made all those paintings. Oh, she's definitely an artist, dude. She's my favorite artist. And don't you forget it. She won't. She's a fucking elephant. But obviously just from looking at AI art pieces, they're not as accurate or artistically impressive as the portraits it's basing the new artwork off of, right? There's just something like really eerie about them. If you made these paintings in your art class, I think your teacher would have to schedule a meeting with your parents because something is clearly wrong. Talking too much about cruise missiles, I'm sure. Tom Cruise missiles. <laughs> Alternate title to Top Gun. <laughs> Tom Cruise missiles. I'm getting distracted, man. And this creepiness is something that's pretty consistent with AI generated content. And I think it's only creepy because like I said before, in the back of your head, you know a human didn't make it. It's like if you woke up one morning and there was just bird shit on your bedroom floor. You know, it's not supposed to be there and it looks way different than the stuff a human would make. That's what AI art makes me feel. <laughs> like there's bird shit in my bedroom or human shit in a bird cage. Either or. Another great example of creepy AI content. There's a video of AI. Take a shot every time I say AI. And fucking rest in peace. But there's a video of AI trying to continue the famous song All Star by Smash Mouth by only hearing the first 15 seconds of the song. And the end result is terrifying. Okay, I 
second thought, that actually kind of goes hard. <laughs> I'll admit it, that slaps. They put the A in AI, because that was, she was lit. Imagine that version in the opening of Shrek. So like the paintings, it's obviously not the most high quality piece of content, but for a robot, pretty impressive. Like you can see the potential in the future for robots like creating art. It's huge. But riddle me this, can a robot write one line of a video script and then proceed to watch one hour of YouTube to reward himself for all his hard work? Ooh. Didn't think so. Hey, just, uh, just popping in to confirm that. I'm currently scripting the video you're watching right now. Um, but here's a, <laughs> here's a video of the history of Mario Kart 64 speed running. So, Hard at work. So if you couldn't tell, I'm in the boat of AI content is bad and scary and I hate it, but I'm willing to go into this with an open mind. And the one cool thing about AI generated content is a lot of it is kind of just like open to the public. There are websites out there where you can use AI to make your own content. So how about we give that a try? Did you like how I put D-A-I-Y, like D-I-Y, but A-I, so D-A-I-Y? Cause I didn't. Okay, I get it, I know. AI can make life way easier for a bunch of people and it can revolutionize the way we use tech. But I don't give a fuck about that, dude. I just wanna laugh at memes, all right? Take me to meme school. <laughs> meme school. Luckily, there's a website where an AI robot will make memes for you. And the results are honestly funnier than any regular meme I've ever seen. So the website's called This Meme Does Not Exist. There's a bunch of like, just like blank meme formats up here and it, just uses like data based on all a bunch of other memes to make AI generated memes. All right, that one with the two the two handshakes, right? The two guys shaking hands. We got <laughs> you see a bear and a strange dick. When you see your friend with his friends, <laughs> that's so sad. And uh, I'll be honest, I used this website for like hours the other night, so I'll show you some of the favorite ones that I made. Or well, I guess I didn't make them. I'll show you my favorite ones that the robot made for me. I want to be a professional person, but I will start a fight. <laughs> I love this one so much because it doesn't even adhere to like the intended format of the meme, right? <laughs> it's intended to be this like mocking type thing, but this one is just like, nope. Listen, I would really like to be professional, but I, I know I will start a fight. I don't know with who or when or for what reason, but I know for a fact I will be throwing hands. I uh, also didn't realize this before. I feel <laughs> feel inclined to say that uh, in my script, it says in brackets, pose like sponge bag. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Yes. Sponge bag. Here's another good meme. Flooding is the best thing ever. Changed my mind. This meme format is just, it's so good. And it's funny to think about anyone being pro flooding, but to imagine someone who is so pro flooding that they set up a desk at a college campus, just begging people to even try to change their mind. Yeah, flooding is the best thing ever. More room for me and my fish. I mean, my fish bros, I mean my bros. Hey, come on, man, are you a fish? Yeah, I'm a fish. To all the boys who think I put the cheese in my bed. <laughs> I think those are just so funny to me because they literally make no sense at all. Like, does this mean boys in general are like boring and lame, but anyone who thinks you put the cheese in your bed is superior? Or actually this is the full real title of the new Noah Centineo movie. I didn't get in. But amidst these absurd memes that make no sense whatsoever, like two times out of 10, this meme generator will actually make a meme that makes sense. Not sure if this is a real person or a Trump supporter. Not bad, that's a pretty good meme. You trying to have a normal day and then your friends show up and now you're not having a normal day. Some fucking random meme page could post that and caption it. Tag the, tag your, tag this, uh. Tag the squat, tag your squat, and then you would get a bunch of likes. I'd hope they'd be more confident with the caption. <laughs> but if memes aren't your thing, I also found another AI website that creates inspirational quotes. Oh, so here yeah. are some of my favorites from that one. Dentists are not, not going to laugh at you. Feel inspired? I do. I'm inspired to never go to the dentist ever again. That's why they wear the, those fucking face masks. Cause underneath, 
Oh man, they're just fucking cracking up. Dentists are gonna laugh at you. That's a guarantee. A guarantee, if you will. And I'm sure you will. Running a small business is 100% cool. Holy shit, did he write that with a sparkler? <laughs> you know how people do that in photos and shit? They'll like, I don't know how they do it, but they make like words with sparklers. Of all the things to write, that's what he picks. You see, in this photo, we wrote happy. And then in this photo, we wrote love. Whoa, cool. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, what did you write with your sparkler? Running a business is 100% cool. What? Why do you do that? Well, I mean, dentists are not not gonna laugh at you. Are you okay? Can you call an ambulance? I thought my lit sparkler was a Q-tip. Jesus Christ, man. Don't get mad at me. Just like the meme generator, this inspirational quote thing is, it's only successful a small percentage of the time. I only really got one that made sense and it was this photo of a boxer that reads, do your best, be a gay wizard. And you know what? That's true. That is unequivocally true. You may think you're doing your best, but if you're not casting spells and fucking, fucking a, a, another person of the same sex, I'm sorry, you're not, wor you're not hard enough. You're not working hard enough. But my man Dumbledore, <laughs> he was always doing his best, bro. Be like Dumbledore, die in the sixth movie. Well, be replaced by another old man in the third one and then die in the sixth one. But those memes and inspirational quotes, you know, they're there to make us laugh. But you know what? That's just immature, dude. Sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta feel shit, you know? Art makes you emotional. So luckily there's an AI program that uh, will write a poem for you. It's called Verse by Verse and it's actually developed by Google. So that's... That's something, right? All you have to do is give it a prompt for the first line and then it does the rest of the poem for you. So here are a few of my poems. Sweet tooth, feed me some of that hot chocolate slop. Turn me into the barn with an arm. Thy dark eyes over the mountaintop. I noticed it in my own new farm. Sharp. I'm a dumb slut with a sharp sword. But frisk into white and virgin knees. Take the boon communion with the Lord. Because of the world, no man shall see. Help me. Pubes so foul they're making me sick. They made me hard by their piety. Ed had a sweet swallow on a stick. After a little pause, she was he. Oh. I'll give you a minute to go to go get some uh, tissue because you're crying or coming or either or. So the memes and poems, those are fun, but. What about videos? Making videos is my line of work and that's how most people consume content these days. So let's see what videos AI can make. And just looking on YouTube, there's a bunch of videos titled forcing a bot to write a blank where they'll force a bot to write a script and then they'll just film that script. And there's one in particular called forcing a bot to write an Olive Garden commercial, which was pretty funny. Almost a little too funny. What is wrong friend four? <laughs> and upon further research, it was confirmed that this Olive Garden commercial was actually written by a human. There was no bot at all. The whole thing was fake. Crazy, right? right? I don't know if you remember, but there was a meme going around on Twitter a while back where people would post scripts uh, claiming that they forced a bot to watch a thousand hours of Harry Potter, for example, and it would make a script. And they were really funny, but those were actually proven to all be fake. They're all just written by a person because if you were to force a bot to watch a thousand hours of Harry Potter, even though a thousand hours of Harry Potter doesn't even exist, <laughs> but if you were to force an AI to watch a video, it would only produce more video. It wouldn't pro it wouldn't write a script with recurring characters and dialogue and stage directions. So I think a lot of people were just using the buzz around AI to make these nonsensical videos actually make sense in some context. And that's annoying, dude. <laughs> Why are, you, why are you lying? Yeah, a robot made this. It did. Trust me. Click the vi Fuck it, click the video. You won't. Do it, bitch. But after watching these videos and 
discovering that these bot written scripts were fake, I got to thinking, which is crazy, I never do that. I got to thinking, is it actually possible for AI to write a full script and for it to be as absurd and funny as those fake AI videos? I guess my real question is, can a robot script a video for me? And there's really only one way to find out. Ooh, it's getting warm in here, so I took my sweater off. Also, check it out. Um, I have a confession though. Believe it or not, I've actually used AI in my last few videos. There's a really cool website called Runway ML that provides tools for content creation that use machine learning. And they have this green screen software that isolates the subject of a video using AI. So you can achieve the effect of green screen without actually using a green screen. So with that program, I can be in my office and then look at that. I'm at the, I'm at the, I'm at the friggin' Eiffel Tower. Bon, bonjour. Would you like a croissant? But they also have a bunch of other tools on there as well. And it's actually surprisingly easy to make your own AI models on that website. I actually made one myself. I trained a bot to make a YouTube thumbnail for me after showing it 30 of my own YouTube thumbnails. And this is what I got. Yeah, you'd click on that, right? You'd see what that was about, right? That amorphous blob with no discernible shape or structure. Dude, my click-through rate's gonna be crazy from now on. So I think this website is the best bet for me if I wanna train an AI robot to write a script for me. And I found out about Runway ML from my friend and fellow Canadian YouTuber, Matthew Paquette. He made a video about Runway ML a while back and he's been using their tools to make really cool content. He made a video on TikTok that got 11 million views, okay, where he trained an AI bot to create photos of people who don't actually exist. Like that, isn't that crazy? That guy isn't even, that guy doesn't exist. He isn't real. I can make fun of this guy and not feel bad. Hey, fuck you, man. This guy sucks. I bet he fucking wets the bed. I bet this guy doesn't even shave his balls, weirdo, loser. See, and it's fine, cause he's not real. And hey, cards on the table, I'm a dumbass, and I don't know if I'm the best guy to actually train an AI bot. So if I'm gonna do this, if I'm gonna train a robot to write a full-on video script for me, I'm gonna need help from someone smart like Matthew. Literally the first half of his name is Math. He's smart. So how about we go have a chat with Matt? A chat you with Matthew. Hello. Hello. For the first time, I, we didn't just have a full conversation before this. You pretty much, I think you'd call yourself a, a genius, right? I mean, self-proclaimed. But no, you're, uh, you've always been like really um, knowledgeable about just like tech and just everything, which I've always been really um, impressed by, if Thank I'm you. if I'm being honest. So that's why I thought, you know, this was perfect for, for you to help me with this video, even though it was technically, you're the one who like told me <laughs> kind of basically the idea for it, but it's all good. <laughs> Sweep it under the rug. Everything, this is all my idea. But yeah, you've been using AI a lot in your like recent content. Yeah, so maybe a couple months ago, um, I came across uh, just some AI stuff on the internet and I was like, oh, that's really interesting and kind of did like a big deep dive into it. Uh, and then just kind of uh, discovered all the different things you can do with AI and you don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to be uh, a genius. Like there are websites for regular people to use to take advantage of AI. Just so, just how AI relates to to creating content. What do you, uh, do you think it's like good in like going forward? Or do you think it could be like harmful in the long run or something like that? Yeah, I mean, when you take a look at what AI has done for like um, content creation, I think there's like two big sides to it. Like for example, let's say you are in the VFX industry and you spend all day, every right. day, cutting out um, your uh, subjects from the scene. Um, uh, some people might be like concerned that that's going to take their jobs away. And then on the other hand, uh, those tools are allowing everybody, including the professionals, uh, to just be more efficient and to create more. Um, and in some ways you can just accelerate the process and hopefully be doing more. In terms of uh, what this video is about, basically, uh, do you think it's possible? Do you think, do you think it can be done to just like every time make a great, <laughs> perfect, legible video? <laughs> I mean, uh, you could definitely have a robot create a script for you. Uh, it just might not be a good script, but it'll make sense. It'll be English. Right. It'll be a video. But uh, as of now, you're probably not going to have something high enough quality to actually shoot and run with. 
Okay. That's bad news. <laughs> but we can try. Yeah, we're going to give it a try. We could do, um, there is a AI model that literally just learns as much as it can off the internet. It'll just scan, ripping all the English text off of everything. And then we can just feed it oh your video scripts and it'll be like a little virtual oh Curtis Connor. Holy shit. Okay. So we're pretty much feed force feeding someone a bunch of crap, all the right stuff. And then they're hopefully they're going to poop out a Curtis video. Precisely. Great. Well, uh, thanks for giving me some insight onto AI. Thanks for helping me out. Uh, everyone check out Matthew's channel. It's, like, it's great. Oh. You can, you can learn a bunch of stuff and you know, I can say from personal experience, He's a good person. Thank you very much. He only paid me a lot to say that. A lot. All right, hello. So Matthew actually made several different models to try to get the best outcome. Also last month I had closed captions added to a bunch of my old videos. So it was super easy for him to get the scripts from pretty much all my videos for the bot. He was able to generate a few scripts that were pretty funny. There was a few issues with the script. Um, I'll show you right now what that video would look like if I did film it with that script. And I'm sure you'll see what the issue is. We've got a big boy today. I think we can all agree on one thing. Curtis, it's babies today. We've got a big boner. I've never been this happy in my life, ever since my iPhone 3GS. I bought it new because I wanted something different with the apps on it. What I'm trying to say is that I miss my boob tube so much. Like what the fuck happened to my boob job? I miss my boobs. I miss having boobs that big. I used to have boobs like everybody does. Now I just look better without it. I just wear makeup and that's about it. I think that's all I can really think about boobs in these terms. Curtis, I think boobs are over party. Iced tea. I think that's all I can really think about right now. Are we in the last days of the baby boomer decade? Well, yeah, I mean, the boob tube is over party, I think. So that's good. So you can see what's wrong with that script, right? It's pretty funny and absurd, but I had to add in my own punctuation to it so I could even read it because it was essentially just one long run on sentence. And America doesn't run on sentence. It runs on Duncan. So this is not gonna cut it. And this happened because the AI model has just strictly my dialogue to go off of. So it's only gonna spit out more of just dialogue. You know what I mean? Like there's no stage directions or different characters or anything like that. So what that means is if I want the AI to essentially write a screenplay for my videos, then it needs my videos in screenplay format. And I unfortunately don't write my scripts like that. I should, I've been meaning to, but I, I am too lazy. So I actually hired a professional video captioning service that was a, uh, a little more expensive than I'd hoped. <laughs> so Matthew and I decided that five videos would be a good amount for the AI to go off of. So I needed to pick five of my YouTube videos out of like the hundred that I have. So that was really tough, but I ended up sending over five videos that I think have a good mix of everything that I do on my channel. The five videos I picked were fulfilling my childhood dream of becoming a magician. I became a country boy, TikTok's worst dating coach. Does anybody else remember Mansers? And the I'm not like most girls phenomenon. I think that's a pretty good serving for the AI. It's a nice little, a nice little beer flight for it, you know, to get a nice sampling of what my channel has to offer, uh, which isn't much. So a week later, they sent me the screenplays and now we had everything we needed. So I sent everything to Matthew and he began training the AI bot. <laughs> Hopefully this fucking works. I'm filming this part before the bot is actually done uh, writing the scripts. I honestly don't know how it's gonna turn out. I hope it's good. But yeah, here's the Curtis Connor video written by a robot. Enjoy. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's quite the opposite as usual. If you're coming back, you're not welcome back. Italian. It's really good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. You see what happens when you subscribe to my channel and you get an extra greeting at the beginning of every single one of my videos. It's really good to see y'all seeing that. But we're gonna come round and say we're not like most country stars. We're gonna show you some country stuff, and I'm gonna throw you some cash. You got some cash, put your money where your mouth is an inch long, 300 a clip. We're gonna throw up the hill, okay? 
So today we're gonna to take a look at some of the most talked about streaming services in the world. And we're gonna take a look at some of them. For example, Netflix is the fastest growing streaming service in the world, accounting for just under a billion videos a week. And it's also the second biggest offender. Twitter behind bars for like two years. <laughs> But dude, fuck, I wince every time I see this guy. I will rub my balls in the balls. And those are just not human reactions and you should never be able to consent to guys like this. So I'm gonna post this video in my bathroom. I swear to God. <laughs> It's easy to forget. It's been a few years since the Amanda show. <laughs> but one thing has changed. A lot of people are like, oh my God. <laughs> We're no longer the same people. We're two people. So if you're coming to the United States, you're not allowed to email. Buy something. You're not allowed to view this content. But according to the latest available data, the top 1% of earners make more than $12,300, making them a millionaire. And that's more than double the average household income. <laughs> and that's more than double the average household income. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some questions and I'm gonna show you some video footage. Well, it's, it's really easy. Hey, brother. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Look at you, brother. I'm just trying to find you. You may be living on a farm, so you gotta start looking at other fields. There it is. There's a lot of good stuff growing up on this earth, but if you wanna be a true country boy, you need to look at some fucking fields. Diamonds up, 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 diamonds up. So I guess we gotta crack the code. Oh, oh! No one knows, I said. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the video. Ugh, sorry, video short. Please, I should just close my mouth. In conclusion, bottoms up. So sue me. Sue me, all right? So if you want to see more like this, you can check out the description and also some poker chips, which I just released. He still sells for a little over $80. You get the poker chips, you know? The dice, the greens, you pick. Okay, it's just me now. There's no robot scripting this. This is normal human stuff, okay? Trust me. <laughs> okay, so am I frustrated that a robot scripted a way funnier video than I ever could? A little bit, I'm a little pissed off. I will admit I had to go through the actual script and tidy it up and move a certain few things around just for it to even make sense to anybody. But all things considered, <laughs> the bot did like a really good job of making something that actually kind of made sense. Uh, shout out Danny, thanks for helping me with that. <laughs> I guess since he was in my magician video, it scripted him in there, so thanks for helping me. Oh. I made that AI model public on Runway ML, so I'll leave the link in the description and you can go uh, Generate your own Curtis Connor script if you want. But yeah, what did I learn? What did I learn from this whole experiment? I don't, I don't know. Maybe robot not bad? Could it be robot sometimes good? Row, row, row your bot gently down the stream. Uh. I don't know. I think in relation to art, AI is best used when it's simply an extension of the artist. But in like 10 years time, if you just let a robot just do everything, it's like, where's the fun in that? Like the reason we make art is to feel less shitty about the human experience for like a short time and to also be able to relate to one another. But what's a robot got to relate to? Squat. Jack squat. Unless robots become like totally self-aware one day and they're able to like reproduce and feel emotions and love and have dreams and aspirations, then, then talk to me. <laughs> Show me a robot who is a legitimate gay wizard and then we'll talk and then we'll revisit this, all right? But for now, if AI can remove all the mundane parts of editing and make writing emails a little easier, 
Fuck yeah, man. Sign me up. I just thought this topic was super interesting and I think it's gonna continue to be interesting the more it develops. And I learned so much making this video. So let me know if you wanna see more videos like this, just dedicated to one topic where I just kinda of dive in and research and try it out. Cause I had a blast, even though this video took so long to make, but uh, it was a good time, I think. In conclusion, bottoms up. <laughs> no, in conclusion, whether AI is used to make videos of yourself bust into move, or if it's Microsoft training a chatbot that allows you to talk to your loved ones after they die. That's a real thing, by the way. I think what we can agree on is AI has and will continue to change the way we do pretty much everything. And whether that's a good or bad thing, we'll just have to wait and see. And while we wait and see, how about we hear a word from today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Folks, browsing the internet can be a lot of fun, but much like other things that are a lot of fun, it can also be pretty dangerous. Every day you send tons of information out into the digital world that can be seen and intercepted by many different parties before it gets to where it's supposed to be going. Think of it like this, if you were writing a love letter to your crush, you wouldn't want a bunch of other randos just reading it before it got to your crush, right? But with a VPN or a virtual private network, you have a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. Only your crush will be reading that love letter, okay? You don't gotta worry anymore. And there's a bunch of VPN services out there, but here's why ExpressVPN is the best. ExpressVPN utilizes the best in class encryption. That means every single piece of data going in and out of your devices cannot be seen by anybody. Not by hackers, not by your internet service provider. Heck, not even the government can see what you got going on. ExpressVPN also safely and securely hides your IP address and replaces it with one of their own. So nothing can be traced back to you. And with servers in 94 different countries, you have a wide variety of places you can choose to appear from. Which leads us to the really awesome benefit of being able to appear from somewhere else. Vastly expanding your entertainment library with just one click. For example, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia isn't on Canadian Netflix, but if I wanna watch it, I just gotta switch to a server in the UK and bada bing bada boom, I'm watching the dang show. Easy as that. If for some reason, you still need to be convinced to listen up. ExpressVPN invests in only premium servers, making them consistently faster than any other VPN provider. They have 24 seven customer support and with their trusted server technology, it's physically impossible for any servers to store logs of any customers. It's super easy to use and it's rated the number one VPN provider by CNET, The Verge, Wired, TechRadar, and more. And they've got a nice deal for you, okay? To find out how you can get three months free, just click the link in my description or simply visit expressvpn.com slash curtistown. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and so many others in the past. Seriously, I use ExpressVPN every single day and I cannot recommend it enough. So give it a try because it also helps me out as well. Everybody wins. Okay, thanks so much. Back to me. Oh, all right, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please press the like button because that lets me know uh, that you liked it and I will make more videos like this. And also, believe it or not, one like equals one cheese in my bed. And yeah, seriously, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video and just the topic of artificial intelligence. I wanna do more videos in this style this year. I feel like I spend a lot of my time talking about things that are bad and I hate and it kind of bums me out. I really enjoy this like deep dive into topics that I find interesting. And you know, just really try to make some funny videos about that. So uh, let me know what you thought of this style and maybe I'll make some more in the future. And if you got any topics for me to talk about, throw them at me. Uh, thank you to Runway ML as well bars. And thank you for watching. If you're still here, check the description for the other things I do. My podcast, weekly podcast called Very Really Good. My merch down there, I got some merch coming out real soon. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to look, it's fucking sick. And yeah, just subscribe if you want, because I make videos all the time. And as soon as you press the subscribe button, you become a valued citizen of Curtistown. If you didn't know, Curtistown is the best place to live in the world and I'm the mayor. So you have to be nice to me. It's the law. But yeah, that's it. Um, I would stick around, but I have to go, unfortunately. Um, I have to go cheer on a flash flood because flooding is the best thing ever. Peace. But we're gonna come round and say we're not like most country stars. We're gonna show you some country stuff. So I'm gonna post this. Holy fuck. So I'm gonna post this video in my bathroom. <laughs> but we're gonna come.